In this video, we are solving all of the world's problems when it comes to living outdoors. That's right, we have an A to Z video about installing a Brazilian hardwood deck. Man, I'm telling you right now, it takes a little extra work, but this stuff is good for 75 years, which means it's almost zero maintenance. Forget your composite, Brazilian is the way to go. Hey, I'm Jeff from Home Run and Vision DIY. And I'm Sam from Samuel and Audrey. And we are gonna work together as a collaboration today to build a floating deck. I'm gonna teach him how to use all the tools because Sam, you've never built a darn thing in your life. Never, nothing. I know, so we're gonna teach him how to do it so you can follow along and learn how to build one too. I'm as green as my pants. Let's get going. <laughs> Let's get going. <laughs> okay, so step one for building a floating deck is you need to get your foundation blocks in place. And that requires removing the organics, which is basically Toto. Then you want to dig down to soil that's compactable, okay? Usually people have clay. If you have sand, you got to remove the sand though. And then once we get that down, we're going to add a little bit of limestone screening, pack it in place to level the block off, drop the blocks in, then we can build on these. These are our structure point load. So once we have all these blocks in place, then we're set to go. So step one, dig the holes, drop in the blocks. We're doing two box beams, and we'll explain that in a minute if you're not familiar with it. So what we're going to do is we're gonna add some lumber and put a beam here that carries load, a beam on the other side that carries load, so we can place our deck on top of those two beams. That's the secret to doing a floating deck. Once we get these holes dug, we'll bring you up to speed with all the tools and materials necessary to build that sucker. All right, Sam, that's a perfect hole, buddy. That actually worked? Yep. Oh my God. Okay, so what we wanna do is 12 inches from here. So I'm gonna want it right huh? there. Yep, so you put your line there and then you dig the hole for this. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll put this here. Yep. So that you know. So we know. Look at you, eh? <laughs> You're gonna be digging too. You're gonna, you're gonna dig holes too? Uh, yeah, okay. Is that a rock? Yeah, it's probably just a rock. Wow. That's a beast, huh? That's a lot of rock. That's a lot of rock. <laughs> at least we're getting, we're getting lower. Holy know? cow. Yeah, that is in there. <laughs> that goes under right there. Rock. That goes under. Yeah? Throw it right there. Get deep. Get deep? Yeah, step right on the shovel there. And... Oh, I've hit bottom again. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> it's the Canadian Shield. I know. All in one spot. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? We dig another hole. We dig another hole? Right next to it. Right next to it. Like maybe maybe here or over there? Ah. I know the more the more we kept digging, the more it became apparent that that's quite a big rock. Our deck is 12 feet, right? I'm trying to go from there. What's that, a 10 footer? 11, 12. We can, we can dig that way. We can dig this way? Yeah. Okay. So basically just like that, but over here. Yeah, so just dig that hole into this, fill this area. Okay. And then we should be fine. So once you've got your hole dug, so you have enough depth, you have to add a little bit of limestone screenings. The reason I love these so much is they pack really nice and tight. And so you just level this off, and this is just to create a nice level surface for putting your block on. And you pick up one of these little 10 by 10 packers, and you just pound the living daylights out of this. All right. And set this in. Ugh. We have structure. <laughs> yeah. You just pound it in, huh? Hey, give it a shot. Oh, careful. Ow. <laughs> nope, just the stone. Oh, just the stone, okay. Just the stone, just where the block's gonna go. Yeah, and you'll actually feel it. <laughs> I almost jammed my wrist there. Right? Yeah. Oh, really pound it. There you go, now you got the feeling. Okay, let's put that block in. So grab it by two corners and set it in place. Oh, hang on a second. Yep. That's been disturbed now, all right. Just like that? No, you wanna no. grab it from the top. Oh, okay. Like that, so like you grab that. two corners. Yeah. Right. And you set it in. Just like that. Yep. Oh yeah, it feels, feels really, okay. feels really good in there. 
It's, 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 a, it's a beautiful hole. <laughs> like, I mean... <laughs> Audrey, do you want to do the, not, the next three? It's like artistic. <laughs> it's artistic. Okay, so our deck comes out almost basically to where this wood is. Okay. It's one so, of the benefits of the way we do this. Okay, so the next step in getting prepared for our box beam is to cut our 4x4 four four posts. This will act as our structural load post that goes in the concrete blocks. And since we have six holes and one of these eight footers, we're going to cut these all at 16 inches for now. Once we get it measured, we can cut it all back later. So we'll just keep it nice and simple. We'll use our square to get the saw in the right place. Now, most skill saws or circular saws like this won't cut a four by four post in one pass. So it's nice to have, use the, a, a square here as a, as a guide. And rotate the beam, line up the blade in the hole, bring the square up against the plate of the saw again. You see it okay? And then cut again. Roll it one more time. And here we go. This will finish it off nice and square. Perfect every time. Oh yeah, that's a good hole. That's a good hole. That's a good hole, Sam. The dog's learning how to build a deck over here. You doing the next one, Togo? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So what we're doing now is I'm just taking a, a, a 12 foot piece of lumber, lining it up to make sure that all of our posts are in contact with each other. That one's a little bit out. Can I have the shovel, Sam? Yep. There and I'll go. show you the secret here. So you don't disturb the soil. This is just push that block. Now push the, build, the board over. Okay. Nice and flush. There we go, done. That's looking good. Now we'll do the other one. The other one. That's gonna work. That's looking That'll good. That'll carry the load. Dude, we are awesome. Look at that. We're, we're halfway done our deck. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Whew. We're earning that lemonade. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so. What do you think, Togo? This is the project manager, by the way, Togo. The right? German Shepherd. Uh, okay, so the layout. This isn't the next step. It's a difficult thing because you've got to wrap your mind around the end from the beginning. And so the box beam is going to be what's carrying all of your structure. Now our layout is going to be exactly 12 feet long. So if our box beam is 12 feet long and it's in the right place to start with, it makes our life simple. So what we're doing is we're using a board up against the edge of this concrete slab so that our new addition is the same depth. I want these tiles to come across and then come across here all in one row. So all the joint lines line up, it'll be perfect. So what we've got to do here is get this board up against the concrete, use it as our line, and get this established up against this joint. Now we've got our new deck, the same depth as this one. You can see that this has the potential to be in the right place, okay, as far as the height, because we're going to put a floor joist package on top of this box beam, and it's going to extend two inches over this concrete here. It's part of our design because these panels behind us actually finish. If we start on that edge, they finish right here. So we're gonna have our deck extend over top to cover the gap. And so what we wanna do is establish this height. Now it's the tricky part, right? We need, we need mercy. The slab is all over the place. We got a, a three inch variance. So we're gonna actually lift this up a few inches and then attach it to the post and then we'll level it so that we can have the ability to level this deck. That's not a problem. We want to make sure we have mercy. If we start too low, then we don't have the ability to level off this deck later. It'll be a disaster. So if you're only building one level, <laughs> you can build it as close to the ground as you can level these boards. And if you're not exactly sure, lift it up out of the dirt a couple inches, then you can attach it and it won't be any problem. So 
let's get some screws and a drill. We'll get this established. We'll get my level on here, get a level line, and then we can get all this box beam leveled off. <sighs> let's do it. <laughs> and then, then we're building joists, baby. <laughs> Eyeball it about two inches above the, the deck. Okay, so like this? The concrete, a little bit further down. Okay. That's probably good. Throw this in here for now. Good. Yep. So what I'm doing is I'm just installing a level beam so that we have some reference to work with, okay? Okay. Remember the goal was to put our two by eights like joists going this way. Yeah. So we wanna establish this beam so that our height isn't too crazy. Yeah. We wanna have this really perfect. So now we got to do a measuring, leveling. Ay, ay, ay. We'll ay, get ay, this ay. one leveled off of this. Yep. And we might have to unscrew and lift them all up and move them around. Um, there really is no way to make a perfect plan because we have to make it perfect for this scenario. Right. And this so is it's a, trial and error. The reason we're using all of these other boards is because Home Depot didn't have the right lengths in stock today. Yeah. Loving it. <laughs> all right. Now, this will be the going across this beam after we remove this beam. So we'll okay. just set it down. Put it here. Right here is good? Yeah. The fun begins. Well, you know, it's just because the Home Depot didn't have any wood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were pretty they were pretty bare. Today. It was it was slim pickings. Bare today. bones. Right. Oh. oh. Like it set it like that? Okay. And then so that's what that looks like, right? Yeah. If you set it on top. Like this? When that bolt is right in between both lines, okay. there should be just a hair of space on each side of the bubble. So, it's gotta go right. oh, so what I'll do is I'll do all the moving and you just scream at me when you got it. So we have our blocks. We have our posts on our blocks carrying load. And now we have the beginning of our box beam. What we're gonna do is we're using the level on a piece of wood and trying to level all four corners of this box beam. And so what I'll do is I'll lift this up until Sam here tells me my bubble's right in the middle bit more, bit more, perfect. A little, yeah, right there. Okay, that'll give wow. us something to start with. So this is just temporary because we're not just building a deck, we're actually trying to build a deck that is level and then the right height to overlap the, the slab next to us. So it's a little more intricate. Once we get everything exactly where we like it, then we can finish building the box beam just like as if it's a normal deck. What we're using here in this deck, because it, it's all above ground, is just a simple pressure treated lumber. We got this at the Home Depot. If your wood is gonna be coming in contact with soil conditions, check the tag at the end of the board. It'll actually say if it's above ground rated or above ground use only or contact ground. It'll tell you on the label if this can be in contact with earth, organics, grass, gardening, or not. This is the not kind, okay? So this is very important that all of this board is free from touching the ground. It will rot if you have it in the dirt. So there's two kinds of pressure treated out there. It's not all considered equal. It's usually the same price. If your stuff's gonna be touching the gardening or going down by the water, make sure you have the right rated material. All right. Huh. Now it doesn't matter what you're finishing your deck with. Pressure treated is always the most economical way to go. When you're building your frame, ah, that just flew in my eye. <laughs> of all the places around here, ah, okay. So reality is we have a great little frame system set up here. It's all nice and level. This is the highest point of our concrete slab. And we're adding spacers to raise up our finished hardwood decking. A minimum of two and a half inches clearance that I need. So I actually have to raise my foundation of this deck two and a half inches just to meet my minimum clearance. And that seems a little bit too crazy, so I'm gonna go actually three. So what we have to do is raise all these, both these beams up three inches, all four corners, and level it off all over again. Let's do it. All right? <laughs> Probably the easiest way to do that will just be to mark it. Okay. We'll measure up three inches, and then yep. we'll just set our beams all over again. Awesome. And then we should be okay. <sighs> it's gotta be flat. Oh, flat, yeah. There you go. <laughs> we'll do that to the other two corners and then we can lift it all Perfect. up. Beautiful. The beautiful thing is, if our math is a little off here, we're giving ourselves a little extra room because we can lift this as high as we want to sure. to make sure that the finish is perfect. This is actually really simple now, right? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this screw. Yep. This part of the board is contacting this line. Ignore that. Okay. Right? Oh, hang on. I got to squeeze. Ah. That brings it out. 
And so I'm going to help you keep it flush like that. Let me see, see how the line opens up? Yeah. It's because it isn't screwed at the other end either. Okay. okay. There we go. All right. Let's lift it up. We'll lift it up and we'll try to keep, keep all of this square. So a lot of times when you're making adjustments with limber, the screw head, which is wider than the shaft, gets in behind the fibers of the board. And when you're backing it out, it'll actually take the board off instead of the screw out. And it'll start opening this huge gap here. Well, that's not any good to you. So the way you fix that, throw another screw next to it and leave the head of that screw exposed. And that'll hold it in place while you pull the screw out. Okay? I'll just save that one for later. Done. We, because we are short on lumber and yep. we have to use two pieces, we have to meet up at the middle of that post. Right in the middle there. So what we're going to do is we use this board here to okay. create an end. Yep. Now we have an end stop. So now we can slide this board to this point, right? And then I just come over here and I mark the middle. That's right. right and in the that's middle. where I'm cutting. That's the bullseye. Done. Done. That's simple. Wow. And you can do this for all four pieces on this end. Yep. Then we'll install them. Install them. And then we'll move the board over there and do all four pieces on that end. Oh, okay. So when you're building your box beam, the idea is to have a four by four post and then two by eight lumber or two by 10 lumber, depending on your span, sandwiched like this. Okay. And then we drill and we put in a galvanized bolt that carries thousands of pounds of weight. And the concept here is we'll have just a load transfer. So now all the joists sit on top of this transfers over like this, like a carrying beam, down the post into the ground, and that takes care of all of our structural load. And if you're really, really long beam and you got to meet in the middle, you can just attach a board at the end. So once it's squared off and use it as a measuring stick and then just mark where the middle of the post is and then cut it there. Piece of cake. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so the only reason we're doing this is because we're doing this as a solution to a problem to build this floating deck and we went to the Home Depot today it's a little early in the season and their inventory was lousy so they don't have enough long lumber to solve our problem so I've got to cut all this into pieces <sighs> oh well it'll get the job done eh yeah hey Sam we'll be all right we'll be all right over here buddy over here All right, All just right. Say that, lay that down. Like that? Yep. So now that we have our box beams uh, basically put in place temporarily, we can make adjustments. And you'll see what I'm looking for here is, I put this beam across, I'm looking for level. Because these things are in the concrete poured cast, they tend to roll around. And so your level is somewhat temporary. So now that it's built, we have an end cap on here holding it still. Now we can really establish whether it's level. We thought we were level before. Now we're going to double check. So right now this is low, okay? So I'm going to mark this with an L for low. I'm going to move up to the middle. Double check here. This is still low as well. That's good. That makes it easy to fix. <laughs> yeah, they're all consistently, consistently low. So the easy thing for us to do is just make small adjustments to fix this end up, okay? So Sam, we'll do this like we did before. So I can be here right, yep. right here? You got it. All right. So we're looking to keep it level. We're looking for perfect. So when I lift my end up, okay. all you got to do is let me know if it's perfect. Okay. Or when it's perfect. When it's perfect. All right. A little bit more. There we go. 
We can also do the same thing with the inside beam. So I just go like this, back the screw off. Yep. Lift up till I make contact. Okay. Done. Done. Now we go to the middle. All right, ready? Yep, let's do this. <clears throat> up it goes, right there. All right, <laughs> now we adjust this one. <laughs> Lift it up till there's contact. There we go. There we go. So now that we have our box beams both in place and everything's leveled off, it's time to add our carriage bolts. Now these are not the half inch that we've used in times past. Uh, this is just a 3 8 bolt. It's rated for about a thousand pounds. Um, not necessary for the half inch here because we're so close to the ground. Even worst case scenario here, <laughs> if it collapses, you're going down two inches, right? <laughs> so we're going to do a, a top and bottom diagonal, and that's going to help increase our stability and keep this deck from sliding around. And we'll put two in every post. That's 12 bolts, 12,000 pounds. Yeah, that's that's a thousand pounds for every 10 square feet. That's pretty I think that's enough. I'll let you decide. Put it in the comments below if you think I'm crazy. All right. That doesn't feel all that sharp. We'll see how it works. Right in the middle. Very important that you take it in and out to clean. The, see how this is all caked up? Put it on reverse and it'll clean out. Drill a bit, pull it out, clean the bit. Okay. When you hear the drill working too hard, this is really, really wet wood. And your bit's gonna get hot in wet wood and it'll shatter. Because water and heat don't work well together. And there we go. Now we're through, we'll do another one. All right. Now the cool thing about these bits is they are exactly the same size as the threaded rod. These are exactly the same size as the hole, so they take a little bit of love. Can you hear what I'm banging? I drive it right deep into the wood. You can see that the it has a bit of a, a square head on it. So if you drive it straight into the wood, that'll help embed it so it won't come loose. And then we take nuts and washers. The whole assembly is galvanized. Stick them on the other side. Now it's best to clean the wood around it, the hole. Get rid of that. That's in the way. Okay. Put the washer assembly on. And then the nuts. And here we go. So, look at this. Oh. Huh? Nice tool, eh? Quick shout out to Crescent Tools. They were at the house the other day filming a little interview for a Father's Day video. Yeah, they brought a few tools along, so I figured I'm gonna use them. This is awesome. Now you can see, the washer's embedded right in that wood, right? You don't need to go crazy on this. But if you can embed the washer in the wood, then you know you've got good compression. There we go. The only thing to remember is when you're doing this, always have the extra rod inside the body of the, the deck, not sticking out on the other side, because then you'll have to come back with the grinder and clean them all off so nobody breaks, rips their leg open when they're walking by. All right, so here we are at the center post. The front, we have the beam, it's completely all the way to through. On the back, it's two pieces. So what we want to do is take our two bolts and we want to install them on a crisscross pattern. So we're picking up each of the beams on the back and the beam on the front. So what we do is we're just going to line up about a 10 degree angle. We'll set our hole here, and then we'll just change the angle. The idea here is to line up your angle so you can see that the, the rod will come through and have enough room for threading on the other side. Right on the money. And then we'll change the angle for this one. And we're going to go a little lower here, so we're using two different points on the post to help keep everything from shifting. And 
Now, if you're at home doing this for the first time, don't be concerned. Everything is going to feel really sloppy and loose until you get this post done and you get your joist package attached. So don't let it bother you. There we go. I'm loving the crescent wrench here. I'm going to put a link in the description so you can get this tool. This is awesome. It's a ratchet wrench that's clear through. You just pop them out, you can change your sizes. You can go over bolts that are extended out, you know, three or four inches. It won't matter. Makes tightening these on just a breeze. And you can just bury those washers right in the wood. That's amazing. Woo! All right, so the next step after we have our box beams in place and they're all bolted in, this is a little different. We're not framing it entirely and then putting on our panels. We're going to assemble the joists as we assemble the panels, just to make sure that we get it really in line. You can see when I take this hardwood panel and I set it on top of the joist package, I'm starting off flush on the outside. And the idea is to line up right in the middle of the joist on the inside so that every one of these panels can transfer load at every intersection point. Now we all know wood is not straight. So what we want to have is flexibility. The idea here is we're going to cut and install the ridge beam here. And then we're going to install the panels all the way across. We're going to then have the ability to manipulate the joists left and right to keep everything in line as we go row by row across the, the deck. I think that's going to give us our best result. An alternate method would be to double up your joist package so that you have a three inch piece of lumber here to work with. Uh, I hate you know, using extra lumber when I don't need to. And this sounds like a lot more fun. And since we have bodies around to help out, might as well put them to work. <laughs> Our ridge is 12 feet and 3 eighths. It's a little long from the factory and we are gonna have exactly 12 feet of finished decking. So I'm gonna just trim this down and I'm gonna install it on this edge to get started. We'll put every one of these joists attached at 24 inch on center from the outside. And then let's put the deck together. We're gonna to get you to help hold that up flush with the top of that board over there, okay? Okay, ready? So when I'm screwing this together, I get a, a good, good result. So here we are, time to square off the deck. Now we're gonna do a really simple system here. We're gonna actually use the clips that are designed to go with the hardwood panels that come pre-assembled. Okay, two by two foot square. And the way this works, this is upside down, right? But it clips basically right into the corner. All right. Now the, the really cool thing about this is it's designed with weak spots built into the backside. So you can actually cut it into outside corners or the joints along the, the front edge. And you just take these pieces, install them, screw them in place if you need to. But once you get started, you can actually move the carriage of this deck to line up with these panels and keep everything perfectly square. Throw in a few screws into the box beam as you go. Presto, change over. We're gonna have a deck in about an hour. Let's get going. So I've screwed down this corner and it's somewhat adjustable. We're gonna snap that one in and snap that piece in. Just gotta find the hole. Okay, so I mean, I have a crazy amount of flexibility here with my installation. I'm just gonna be lining that up on the front of that board, adding a screw, locking this in place, adding an edge bracket to the outside, Wow, that is ridiculously easy. <laughs> this is the most crucial part of the whole project, this first piece. I'm using my rafter square just to make sure that this deck is perfectly square here at the outside corner. And now I'm gonna attach my inside plate here. So you can see our assembly system is really easy. We get all of these started on these brackets. Now, because my joist is not connected at the back, I have the ability to move this around. The goal is to have this ridge right in the middle line. Okay, and because 
everything that's made of wood will move over time. Having it dis is it disengaged at the other end gives us all the flexibility in the world that we need. All right, let me just make sure that we're alternating our pattern. Dropping them all in place. <laughs> like, <laughs> done. It's like, it's like, it's like Lego. Uh, it, it assembles so easy, it's kind of ridiculous. I love how these pallets are so strong, they transfer all the load. So it's, it's not difficult to work with. And although all the edges may not be perfect, I think over time you'll find that as everything settles and the crown works out of the wood, this is gonna sit absolutely gorgeous. So what I'm doing here, is I'm just gonna mark where my tile finishes. That's the edge of my deck. I wanna remember, if that's my finished deck, I wanna take off an inch and a half from my ridge. All right, now I wanna take my square Mark my line, bring my saw over, and I'll cut this in advance. That is awesome. Now I can take my finished edge from this plastic. I'm gonna be cutting it 22 and a quarter for the whole way. <laughs> All right, so basically we're finished the ground level deck installation. Not so much ground level as floating. It's less than 24 inches and in our area that doesn't require any building code or railings. So it's a really simple installation. It might be different in your area, so check with your local building code before you go and make a huge investment like this. You might just be surprised. You might not even be able to use box beam. You might have to put your major beam on top of your posts that are in the ground. They might have to be in concrete. <sighs> There's a lot of different options out there depending where you live. So be sure to check. This is our trim board. This is the Brazilian hardwood. And we're just gonna cut it with our square and our saw here. Let's see how this works. All right. So that is a basic Diablo uh, blade. It's a 60 tooth, not an 80. Carbide tip. And I've been using it for weeks. Perfect. Warning, resist the temptation to continue installing the wood until you've done the end seal. Now I know a lot of guys will cheat when they're doing pressure treated lumber. This is not pressure treated lumber. You cannot cheat. If you don't seal this product on the ends, it will split and crack, and then you will be left with an amazing mess. And if you have any leftover on the surface, that's why God invented jeans. Here we go. <laughs> Ta-da! Now for finishing off your skirt board, remember it's a hardwood surface. We have to pre-drill all our holes. And I'm gonna suggest you go just one hair above the 1 8th. 9 64th bit is good for me. That'll help make sure that we're not gonna split the end. Okay, we're just gonna get this nice and flush. Create a bit of a picture frame trim on it. Oh, that is sexy. And up another hair there, if you could, Watson. There you go, everyone. Beautiful. Sweet. Nothing like grade five math. Okay. <laughs> Usually on our channel, we try to do things with pretty basic tools. Yep. Today we are upping it just a bit. We've got a hammer drill, which is not a big investment. Um, and if you don't have one, you can rent it for four hours to do this project. And we have our simple grinder. It's not plugged in yet. Good. With a cutoff disc. And what we're using is powder coated metal brackets. Now this is really important. 
because the folks at Advantage Lumber have advised us that when you're working with this hardwood, you've got to use, you know, stainless steel or this powder coated metal. If you use galvanized, after a few years, it's going to get this whole, I'm so sad, I'm crying look, right? Oh, wow. Just black lines everywhere. Yucky. So to avoid that, use the right materials. So we're going to just drill some holes. We're going to fill it with hydraulic cement. Okay. And then we're going to cut this down a little bit so we don't have to drill nine inches deep. Because this is not new concrete, far. right? No, it's not. And then we'll set them in place and we'll tap con some screws into them. Get these posts installed. You know, okay. and then we're halfway to a pergola. We've done a lot today. Yeah, it's been a busy day. <laughs> it's been but a good day. All right, so I'm gonna let you drill that hole. You see this groove here? If you put your hand in it like that, yeah, then you'll 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 have be a nice control there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just give everybody. Okay. Yeah. I'm liking that. I'm liking that. That's good. Yeah. I'll show you how is this done. Okay. There we go. Okay, so there are a lot of ways to install a pergola post. Um, some of these systems are out there. They're just you attach the bottom of the post. You screw it into the ground. I'm not a big fan of that. I like to have a, the bolt anchored in there. This is a really long hole to drill and usually we use these when we're using uh, new concrete. So we're just gonna cut these down as we go around, get these nice and flush, tap con them through the surface as well. That'll give us lots of protection with the hydraulic cement from lift because we're gonna be putting in sun sails and we are gonna have lift. So we better have this secured. Use glasses when you're cooling this at home. To set our posts in the holes, which are larger than they need to be, we're gonna just use a little bit of fast concrete repair. It's basically hydraulic cement. Uh, once we get it mixed up, it'll set up in about 15 or 20 minutes, and then we'll be good to install posts within a, within a half an hour after that. All right, after, let's do this. We'll mix right into the bucket. Uh, they're only six bucks. <laughs> I already got rid of a lot of it. All right, we're supposed to just mix it to a slurry. I read the instructions, and it said mix until it's like a slurry. I don't know what that means. Like, I don't know how much water it takes to get to that point, right? Yeah. That is beautiful, yeah. And now I'll just scrape out all the corners now. Get all that dry stuff mixed in, okay? There we go. So we're just gonna fill all six holes with this stuff. It sets really quick, eh? Yeah, really quick. Oh, Opa. Oh. Okay. Always ready, always solving the problems. All right, now. Good enough. Done. Good That's morning. not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so we have our saddles in place. We use a quick set cement. It was dry, I don't know, three minutes later, but it's the next day now, so no worries there. We're not gonna bother with the tap cons. We checked it out this morning and they are not going anywhere. Unfortunately, our slab is an unlevel surface. Hopefully, if you're building a pergola at home, you are working with a level surface, and then you won't have to do what I'm doing now, but I'm gonna teach you an amazing trick for whenever you need a level that's extremely long. What we have is three two by fours here. I've taken two of them, and I've just stretched them out the full length that I need, which is 190 inches. And in feet, it's just a whole bunch. So, <laughs> what we're gonna do is screw this together and create this L shape with the third part and we're gonna use this to stretch from saddle to saddle to saddle and get the actual measurement for the height difference on the top of the saddle for each post. And then we can translate that information onto our post. That way we can pre-cut them and get the ends sealed in wax because that is so important when you're working with this product. I've been warned not to drill all the way through into the deck. It's early in the morning and my latte has yet to really kick in. <laughs> nice here. Yeah. Once we have this assembled, we can stretch it across the saddles, get our measurements, because there is just nothing better than having perfectly level product to work with. So 
So we know from measuring earlier that the highest point on this slab is actually right over here, but the saddle on the other side over here is actually the highest saddle on the slab. It was installed about a half an inch above the concrete. So we're using that as our measuring stick to go for every corner to get all of our heights. <laughs> so we just put our little stick here across, added some shims, found our level mark, that works good. So since the level is sitting in the saddle on the other side, we're just gonna measure from the bottom of the two by four down to the concrete. We're gonna add that distance to the top of the post on this location. And that measurement is three and three eighths. Careful, when you're measuring something like that, you've gotta get down eye level with it. You can't guess or you'll get it wrong. And we're just gonna write that down right on the concrete. We're just gonna do that in every location. And then we'll cut our posts. Two by four. So the right side's still higher. Tell me when. Right about there. One and a half. I'll get you to read it. And then I'll measure it off. About that. Okay, two and an eighth. That's about what we figured, five inches off. Are you, are you on it now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it will level. Yeah? It'll go above it. Yeah. Two and a half. Beautiful. There we go. Well, we're done. So the first step in doing your pergola is not to put the posts up. The first step is to actually measure off your posts, but you want to build your carrying beams. And by that, I mean the long support that's going to go from corner to corner. In this situation, we're spanning 15 feet, so we really want to have a laminated beam, which is two pieces of the two by material glued and screwed together to create that whole length. We want to set that up first, give it time to dry, then when we can bring it over in place. And the way you do that is you measure from the outside of your saddle to the outside of the saddle. And as long as all your measurements are consistent with where the saddles are sitting, you'll make it perfectly square and level building. If you start using a level and then measuring from top to top, you're heading for disaster. Now, traditionally a lot of the material that will come from the factory is not cut perfectly square on the ends, so you can't really trust it. Uh, it's always best before you install major pieces like this to cut it square, get a nice edge, especially if you're laminating, because when you bring those joints together, if it's even cut at one degree, it's gonna look really ugly and have an open gap. So we're gonna just trim back all of our boards before we get started, and then when we measure it, we're gonna have something that we can work with. Just another little tip, when you're cutting something like this, make sure the part that you wanna keep is on the downside, and that'll leave the cleanest cut. Always going to get a little bit of fraying on the on the top surface when you're using a saw like this. Alrighty, mama. So now it's time to screw and glue the beam together. We are using a PL Premium basic construction adhesive. They are going to make this from a lot of different places all over the world, and they do not clean up very well. <laughs> right? We're going to just turn this over, rest this in place, and it is not an instant bond, so you have time to line things up. And we are actually designing this, so this is the face of my beam, and that'll be the outside corner of my post. And so I've created an inside miter to receive the thickness of the second joint. I'm going to slide that over one and a half inches, and I am going to glue this whole thing together all at once. We will start with the screwing process down at this end, making sure we're staying, keeping everything tight, flush and level as we move our way along the beam. Good, so just make sure that your drill bit when you're pre-drilling isn't gonna come through the other side of the wood. And we're gonna just put in a few screws here to tighten this all up. Yeah. Makes good sense to clean that as you go, eh? I think I'm gonna go all silver. So I'm gonna completely fill the end of this meat with the with the glue so I don't have to use the end sealer. And then we will put that piece together.
got to love woodworking without a word shop. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, remember, if you're using this product, you've got to use the sealer. This is a wax-based sealer. It goes on all your end cuts. This will keep your product from drying out and splitting on you. Here we go. And just wipe off any extra. So, okay, so we've completed our carrying beams. We've pre-drilled and glued and screwed and got them all clamped together and drying over there now. So now it's time to put up our posts. We've got our measurements, so now we're gonna translate all that information onto our post. Our baseline is 102 inches, and that's the high post. And now we just add all the dimensions off our leveling system to that number, put it on the tape, on the post themselves. Again, because it's hardwood, we are going to take the post, we're gonna square off the base in case the mill has it unsquare. We'll take it over, mark all of the holes, take the post to a pre-drill station. We're gonna have part of the crew doing all the pre-drilling. And then we'll bring it all back in place, install them in place with our stainless steel hardware, and then it'll be lunchtime. Yeah, and, and just a tip when you're working with the crew, um, label not just the measurement, but the location. So these are alphabetized for our layout. So A, B, C, D, E, F, and that makes sure that everybody is going to be in the right place at the right time. Hopefully, six letters of the alphabet won't be too confusing. And this saw does cut a 4x4 four four post with a 10-inch blade. <laughs> How about that? Ah, that just became about $50 more valuable, Max. <clears throat> okay, those are only 80 pounds each, eh? Holy cow. That actually works. That's great. That's, uh, that's not terrible. No. All right, now since we're dealing with hardwood, we're just using a sanding block. Give it a quick scuff. Get those little, little deburring action, I guess we'll call it, off the wood. Make sure that we finish making it as nice as possible. It only takes a second. And it makes the difference between looking at your deck going, oh, I wish I'd done that, versus I'm glad I did that. Here we go, ready to roll. Now we seal the ends and then we'll mark them all, pre-drill our holes and off we go to the races. So we just ripped off a piece of cardboard, put it up against the saddle, made a template for this, drilled it, and translated all that information onto these posts. So now we're pre-drilling all the posts before we put them in place. This will be really fast. And then when we're done, we'll flip them over and template the other side. Okay, so now it's time to drop our 100 pound post into position. Ha ha ha! Dear Lord. Now, we got these pre drilled, so it's just a matter of driving it. Not as concerned about how level they are at this point. All of this is going to have a certain amount of flexibility and we will get it all tied together. Okay. That's right. You go ahead, Sam, and I'll pass it to you when you get up there. 
just get up like Just that. climb up, yeah. Okay. So where you want to hold it so it's in front of the beam. Like this? Just there. Just there? Yep. Okay. You really went on the wrong side of that post there. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crawl up on that thing. <clears throat> okay. I got my side. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Okay. You want to go help him? Mike, I got this side. Go help him. Yep. Okay. We're on. So let's just hold nice and steady here. Let the post uh, carry all the weight. This is temporary. That's temporary. And that should hold all that in place. I'm going to put a second so it can't twist. All right. Here we go. That's not going anywhere. Yay! All right, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to cut our support posts to go uh, from the top to the middle, and then from here to the other outside corner. We're going to do this by measuring down at the saddles, because it's the law of angles in math. Anytime you have something that's square, it has exactly the same dimensions, top and bottom. So as long as I cut my post based on the saddles and put it up top, it automatically squares all my frame up. So my distance here from the outside to the middle of this one is 85 and a half. I'm going to take off an inch and a half that represents the thickness of that post here. So I need a piece that's 84 inches. Boom. Done. Love it. <laughs> and this one, we'll go 87 and 5 eighths. Okay. <laughs> so we're using Simpson Strong Tide Decorative Structural Fastener. This stuff here will actually hold this pergola together regardless of weather conditions. And we just have to be careful because we have to pre-drill everything. We can't assemble it as we go. So I'm just making sure that when we put our beam in position, I'm ready to attach it all. That's that one. Okay. All right, can you come over here and put that level on this beam then, please? Okay. So, Sam, yeah. you're leaning that way, right? This way? And you're leaning towards him. Yep. What we want is that gap close at the top. All right. Go. Yep, we're good. Now, since we're not attaching this to the, the house, we're gonna bolt this into the other floating deck just to give it some more stability. Beautiful. Okay. We're gonna use this as a, a cross brace. Yeah. So I can start with a. All right, good, thank you. We're gonna put that side up, okay. right? Okay. And then lift this side up. Okay. There's an inch and a half overhang on the front board, yeah. but it actually goes all the way in. Yeah. Don't try to fight it all the way in at the, out of the beginning. Okay, all right? just get it up there. Get it up, get that inch and a half on, then we'll fight over here and then we can okay. set it in place. Okay. Once it's in place, everybody has to kind of work together to hold this thing together until I get the screws in. Good, Max. Now up.
So here we are. We're gonna put in our inside corner stabilizers now. And of course, being hardwood, everything has to be pre-drilled. So we just wanna make sure that our angles are absolutely perfect. Let's, uh, let's put the bolt in this first before we lift it up. Can I get a break, please? Ah, oh. well, you know, just a little bit of nice weather. Instead, I, you know, like, what? <laughs> I'm on the edge of the earth. I feel like I'm standing on top of Mount Everest. It's cold. The winds are 50 kilometers an hour. I'm gonna try to install a sail. I think I'm crazy. We gotta stretch this out so I know the shape again. I think what I'm gonna do for now, I'm just gonna temporarily hang it like that. One of those two inch steel bolts. Oh. So shady in here. It is. <laughs> so shady. Perfect. Okay. So that one does go up there. Uh, there. There we go, we're all finished our pergola. We got her built, we got her supported, and we got her sales up. And a big shout out to Color Tree. Uh, we found them on Amazon, so you can follow our link to see them, or put a link to the Color Tree in the description below if you want to order custom sizes, because they will do that for you. All right, so listen, this has been a lot of project. It has great shade. If you're looking to do a DIY pergola at home, this is something to consider, because these sales are actually a lot less expensive than any wood option, and they give you 100% sun coverage. Hey, in this video, we are gonna be installing a hardwood deck over top of concrete using the Advantage Lumber System, ePay Brazilian deck. It's gonna be amazing. And yes, hopefully your deck is not as messed up as this one. Even if it is, we have a solution to this problem. We're gonna be installing these awesome adjustable clips that can make this thing perfectly level. Stick with us, I'm gonna blow your mind. In this video, we are on the road again. We're in beautiful Bramley. Bramley, yeah. Toronto. Toronto, Brampton yes. area. And I'm with my friend Samuel and Audrey. They have an awesome travel channel and we reached out and said, hey, stop filming at home until we make your beautiful deck. So we're here to rescue them. We made one behind them. It's made of solid wood. It's a raised deck. If you haven't seen that video, there'll be a link in the description, but don't go there yet. Watch this one. Yes. We're going to build a deck on this concrete. On this big sexy slab. Right. Yeah, big not, sexy not. <laughs> slab. It's kind of yeah. like four slabs and they've all went <laughs> poof, poof, poof. And so we have been in touch with Advantage Lumber. Yep. They've got some systems. We put all the parts together. We're going to raise up a level floor. Floor. And it's going to be hardwood decking. Wow. And then we're going to put a pergola yeah. and some sunshade. No one's going to miss this slab. Because although it's May <laughs> and it's still cold and we have yet to see the sun for more than six hours at a time, yep. it does get hot here in the summer, we are told. So today we are working on a concrete patio project where we're going to resurface the whole area in a hardwood decking tile. Now these things are amazing. They come from Advantage Lumber. You may have seen them advertising on the internet and there's a reason for it. They're number one. They have the best Brazilian hardwood in the world and they ship everywhere. So if you're in the market to get rid of your ugly concrete and get somewhere really nice and warm and comfortable to sit down that's not going to burn your feet in the summertime, this is definitely an option you should consider. The hardwood tile is a really long lasting product. It really is designed to compete with all the composite products out there as far as the easeability. Really all you do is you install it and you put an oil-based sealer on it. Maybe every few years it needs a quick 20 minute paint job just to freshen up. But other than that, there's no painting and waxing, stripping, sanding, none of that routine you're gonna get with all your softwood options. And it's incredibly durable and so easy to install. They come with these awesome little clip systems and all you do is you set it on the ground. They're pre-drilled, all these holes right here. You set them over top of the clips and snap them in place. Now you can install this entire deck on a flat surface in an afternoon. 
and they all go together that easy. And bam, your options moving forward. Ah, you can continue on with the grain in the same direction, or you can alternate your pattern. <laughs> How fun is this? Oh. There you go. You have a brand new hardwood deck in just a matter of minutes. Uh, so listen, the material itself, yes, it's not cheap, but it's worth it, okay? It'll last 50 years without even thinking about it. We do expect if you maintain it properly to last 75. So this is something you can install in your house and your children can enjoy for all of their life as well. Brilliant, it only go, takes a few minutes to install. The only secrets you really need to know about are when you cut it, you need to seal the wood. And that comes with the product when you order it, and they have a 1-800 number to help you out if you have any questions. Now, unfortunately for us, we don't have a flat surface. So, today's video is actually going to get extreme. We have got a deck surface that's been cracked and moving in many different directions. And so we are going to use... Bum, 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 their problem-solving solution called the Altitude Pedestal. Now this comes with some little core that you can actually buy and install. And you can raise these pedestals to any height you need to help level off your deck and they have an adjustment on it so that you can change the angle to follow the slope of your structure. This is awesome because ours has a five inch change from the middle to the outside corner. We're gonna be needing it. We're gonna lift up the whole deck to get rid of the need for a step going into the house and it's not gonna go down quite as quick, but it will last just as long. So without any further ado, let's get measuring and using some levels because we got a couple hours of measuring and cutting before we can start installing. As you can clearly see, our surface is nowhere near level. We are actually, from this height to the far corner over here, we're down five inches. So what we have to use is these little component systems here, and we are going to be leveling off and cutting our, this is our four inch schedule 40 PVC. It's not standard around these parts here in Canada, but you can find it if you spend a whole afternoon on the phone. <laughs> ah, I'm just joking. The reason they've got something so strong in their specs is because it's part of their structural component system for installing this on roofs, and it has to be all screwed together. And this will hold screws really well. The four inch PVC we have in our country probably will work as a support, but do not try to install that on a roof because it will not give you the same kind of quality result. Anyway, we're gonna be cutting these down and inserting them in the caps in the bases to create a level platform that we can put all of our decking tiles on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just use the existing deck over here as our level line and put our level off of that. So you can see we've already set this one up here. Here's the top and bottom plate. We've got our gray PVC in here and we're bringing our platform just to the bottom of the free floating deck. And what we'll have is when we put our tile on top of this, we'll have a perfect one by six we can use to finish this edge cover the gap. It's beautiful. It's a natural step. So we have this we're going to use as our level line. We're going to level everything else off the concrete platform based on this deck. That'll just give us something to start from and hopefully make this job a little bit easier. So the way that we're going to determine the height to cut the PVC is we use the level off the one that's measured for the deck and my assistant is going to tell me when this is level. Okay, three and three eighths. Woo. Plus the PVC gets cut inside and it's a full inch and a half. So three and three eighths, inch and a half, five and an eighth. There we go, we'll cut that one five and an eighth. And we're just gonna measure all the way across the deck, get all these measurements over and over and over again. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but it'll be worth it. Thanks to the folks over at Evolution Tools, they supplied us this saw. They wanted us to try it out. It's got a new blade here that cuts metal and wood. And so we're going to see if it works. What we're going to do is we're going to use it on the hardwood decking material all day long. And then when we're done, we're going to see if this blade stands up and can cut metal at the end of the day. <laughs> That'll be the ultimate test. There we go, that does a really nice job. Very good. This is only a 10 inch blade, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the saw cutting, and we're gonna roll the blade in, roll the PVC into the blade. Whew, that 
wasn't terrible. Are you serious? That's level? Perfect every time. Let's go four and seven eighths. Three and three quarters. Three and three quarters. We're going to be starting this panel at the corner where our post is. So lucky for us, the bottom side of these are reinforced with hardwood panels, kind of like a pallet going the opposite direction. So all we have to do, measure this off, Give it a quick cut with our skill saw. Make sure you're using a carbide tip blade or you will not be able to cut hardwood. Really hard wood. <laughs> man, oh man. Yeah, I'm going to suggest using a jigsaw. Whew. Now I gotta go get my chisel. Come on. Okay, now, the Ipe hardwood from Brazil must be sealed on all the ends when you cut it. It is this simple, it takes a minute. It's a wax sealer that they supply. And if you don't do it, all of your wood will start to crack. So take this little job seriously. This is not a place to cut corners. And if you're employing somebody to install this for you, keep an eye out, make sure they do it right. Okay. You got it. Yeah, yeah. That's the one. All right. Four, four thousand times more. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And there is no two measurements that are the same here, and that just you know, an extent of how awesome the system is, because you could build a patio on just about anything. Oh, this would be awesome on rooftops where you just don't have any stability. Everything's moving and coming and going. Just set these on the gravel and off you go. I want to make a rooftop patio now. <laughs> so the pedestal itself, it has all of these locations. It sets the, the depth in between the, the pieces, has the, the little attachments, but also has this locking ring here that you can loosen and then you can swivel. You can set your angle on your plate, okay? So then once you get this in position where you like it, you can shift it and move your tiles left and right. See that? Get everything squared off and level the way you like it. And when you have where you want it, put the Allen key in the top and you can tighten up that ring and set that location. <clears throat> now it's not moving anymore.
Well, for whatever reason, we are flying through this project this morning. Here we are. We got to just switch out our uh, grinder for my cup grinder. This wheel is diamond tipped. It is amazing <clears throat> for cutting stone. So we're gonna just take the ridge off the concrete so we have a nice flat surface to put our pedal on. And uh, I'll probably clean the edge up a little bit too. Just so that after we're done, you know, we have something flat that we can attach all of our fascia boards to. All right, well, it's time to fill in all the outside corners. Of course, nothing here was anywhere close to square. So we're gonna be trimming a lot of the ends here, uh, which is difficult. You gotta be careful with this project. It's full of screws, okay? So you really got to translate your cut on both sides and then remove screws that are going to be in the way. Ah, for this one, I'm lucky. I don't have any screws in the way right at the moment. <laughs> wow. Yep, that's hardwood, all right. Oof. That's that's incredible. That takes some work. Even with that beautiful saw. So we're gonna need sealer on every one of these boards, eh? Okay. So I'm doing all the cutting over here. Danielle is over there at the other bench, and he's doing all the end sealing. And we're gonna just kind of be rotating through trying to get these down as fast as possible. So we're in a unique situation because these pillars are generally designed for rooftop assembly, but because of our patio and our needs to create the level, we now have to build a fascia system around this deck. So uh, in all my years, the simplest way to solve a problem is using adhesives. And so what we're gonna do is take our scrap wood, a few good dollops of the good old glue here. We're gonna set it on the concrete relatively flush. Use our little square to identify where that is. Pull it up flat. There we go. And let that dry overnight. Now I've got a beautiful surface here for me to cut a skirt board and a nailing surface when I'm all finished. So we're going to do that all the way around and then we'll take the grinder off, cut back any extra plastic that we don't need in the area, and then we're ready to take care of this first thing tomorrow morning. I'm going to basically just uh, glue the entire deck here and then I'm going to come back and set them all in okay <laughs> well we're almost finished all I have left is put on the skirting dress up the stairs but another hour or so and I'm all finished just want to get a little break here I gotta catch my breath it's been a long busy day the screw across the middle here and that works great all the way around because this solid lumber right here I just spent the last four days cutting in this Brazilian walnut hardwood deck and that was a lot of cutting so this is the new evolution saw with the new blade that's designed to cut everything without changing your blade so we figured let's give it a test after we're done building the hardwood deck and we'll see if this blade can hold up so this is just a simple piece of composite and we're gonna run a five or six different materials here and we'll just go from you know best to worst and we'll see how it performs So not just a hot knife through butter, but look how sharp that line is. All right, that's good. All right, tubing. Huh. Yeah, it doesn't melt it. Again, it's cutting clean. Good. Soft metal, copper pipe. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> Don't even need to debur it. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, I got a cramp in my face. All right. Oh, here's something common. Steel track. This is for stud walls in the house. Let's see how it cuts this mess. It's really soft and flimsy. Yeah, I knew it would cut. That's not bad. It didn't want to lift it up and throw it in my face, so I appreciate that. Oh, here we go. Wow. Wow. You hear that? That's a piece of steel. Quarter inch tubing. Like it was made for it. Not bad, eh? Impressive. And here we go. Quarter inch steel pipe. This is awesome. This is square tubing. This is the stuff they use to make furniture on the YouTube channels every day. Wow, that's awesome. Now the most important test of all, can it still do a nice clean cut on hardwood after I just kicked this butt with squared steel tubing? Here we go. Not bad, just a little bit of burr, but that's pretty sexy. So there you have it, folks. One saw, every job, never change a blade. <laughs> if they could just make it turn on a little faster, Max. <laughs> just thought you might like a, a look of the finished product now that we've got all of the tiles in place. So remember, for going over top of concrete, you get a hardwood surface, really, really simple if it's flat. Really, really, really a lot of work if it's not, but it's doable. And I'll be honest with you, I think it's definitely worth the investment of time. Hey, listen, we had a lot of fun, Samuel and Audrey, doing this collaboration with you and your parents. We'll see you again next time. Make sure you check out this link right here, because this is going to be the special video where we do our collaboration with that awesome traveling couple, Samuel and Audrey. Don't forget to check them out.